Hi there, my name is Dr. Daniel Crespi. I'm a paediatric gastroenterologist and I'm going to talk to you about blood in and around poo in children and why that, why that could be happening. It's a rough guide for parents. Just as a disclaimer, this is not a substitute for your child having a thorough clinical examination by a medical practitioner. Always seek medical help or attention if you've got concerns about your child's health. So when your child or you see blood for the first time with poo, it can obviously be a shocking or alarming experience. The amount of blood can really vary. It can be small little streaks of blood in looser stools in a baby who looks very well, or it can be a much larger volume of blood that's either on or in or mixed in with the poo or on the tissue paper or in the toilet bowl, or the poo can look very abnormal and a dark black-like substance called melina. The blood can come from anywhere along the GI tract. The digestive tract is a very long tube, many metres in length, and the upper region goes from the food pipe to the stomach to the small intestine, and there's the lower region as well. The clue is in the colour of the blood. If it's bright red, it often indicates it's a lower digestive tract problem from the anus or the colon and that could indicate things like fissures from constipation or hemorrhoids from straining or it can indicate inflammation of the bowel with ulcers in the colon for example. That can be caused by different things including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease or sometimes other conditions such as necrotizing enterocolitis in a young premature infant. If the poo is very dark and tar-like with a distinctive smell. This usually indicates the blood source is much higher up in the, in the digestive tract, somewhere in the stomach or first part of the small intestine, from a, for example, an ulcer caused by an infection with helicobacter or medication such as ibuprofen. Occasionally, blood can be swallowed in a newborn baby breastfeeding. That could be the case, in which case the blood is not its own blood, but more from the mother's nipple that's been traumatised at some point. A first crucial step is assessing your child and working out if they look well and reasonable enough compared to their normal day-to-day behaviour or they look unwell, in which case that would dictate your next step of seeking medical attention much more quickly. There may be other issues you've been worried about or your child's told you about that could include significant tummy pain or there's pain around the bottom with straining which may indicate something simple like constipation. They may have fever and vomiting and diarrhea which could indicate an infection of some sort but there are features of the vomiting which could be more alarming such as blood or bile again which would point towards you needing to seek more rapid evaluation. Black stools, known liver disease or other medication use may indicate other problems So at home, if your child looks reasonably well with a very small amount of blood that's come out, then it could be attributed towards something like a hard poo with constipation. You've got more time to arrange things. It's often useful to take a photograph of the poo and the blood, just as a record to show the doctor if you see them. If your child looks in any way unwell, with looking pale or under under the weather with inactivity or fever or any of these other alarm features and head straight to the emergency department for an evaluation. The doctor there will review things, go through the story with you in much more detail, ask you about how often and how long this problem has been there for and then they may look to evaluate with a a physical examination as well which would normally also include a look around the bottom area to see if there's any source of bleeding there such as a fissure or a skin tag or other infection for example. If they've thought this is due to something relatively innocuous like constipation or suspected allergy they may say go home and treat it but if they are worried about your child being unwell they'll admit to the hospital and aim to improve the situation with resuscitation and then make appropriate investigations and referrals to the relevant teams. The cause of blood with poo can really vary with age. A common cause though, and probably the most common cause across all the age groups, is constipation causing a fissure and sometimes a hemorrhoid in that region. Other 
Common causes can be infections, especially when there's vomiting and fever, and it's a short onset history of diarrhea. But with more chronic symptoms, other conditions should be considered as well. If there's no diarrhea and the, and the blood comes and goes, especially in younger children from about the age of three to 10, a polyp may be the cause. These are usually quite harmless. Other conditions in children who generally are much more unwell and often will need a surgical intervention to help include Meckel's diverticulum and intersusception, where parts of the bowel telescope into one another, cutting off the blood supply, a very dangerous condition. In a very young, premature infant, necrotizing endocolitis can be a cause of this as well. A doctor would proceed with evaluation with blood tests, stool tests to check for infections and inflammation, and possibly also an urgent scan, particularly if they're concerned about some form of obstruction such as interception. An ultrasound scan is the key test for that condition. If your child's got chronic issues with bleeding, possibly diarrhea, weight loss, abdominal pain, or just rectal bleeding intermittently, then an endoscopy, looking at the lower bowel, may be important test to do next. This is usually before blood is general anesthetic, when your child's stable. Here, for example, is a, a colonoscopy being performed, and on the left-hand picture you can see a small mushroom-like polyp which looks a little bit sore and inflamed and is the source of bleeding. The colonoscope can be used to put a lasso-like electrical wire around the polyp and then snare it and then cauterize it and remove it so that the picture on the right shows you the bowel without the polyp there anymore. And that can be analyzed further. Follow-up for children with gastrointestinal bleeding depends really on the cause and if there's any interventions already been put into place. It, something simple like constipation would need treatment with laxatives for some time. Cow's milk allergy, for example, would need a modified diet with the aid of a paediatric dietitian supervising that. Polyps, if just one or two, may just need to be removed and your child can be discharged from further follow-up, but just with you keeping an eye out for recurrence of symptoms. Other conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease do need long-term follow-up with a multidisciplinary team. And this follow-up can occur with a GP or paediatrician or any one of other, several other specialists. Really, this video was to let you know that rectal bleeding in children does occur. It's not that frequent a condition and it can really vary in its cause from being quite mild and benign without needing much intervention to much more serious occasionally even life-threatening causes but you should always seek appropriate evaluation that's a really critical step and if you've got concerns or worries then do definitely seek medical attention about your child to get reassurance about the cause or to treat whatever it is that's causing it.